Jamie Hi, Josta. What's up? Welcome to the show, my friend. What's going on? Thanks for having me on. Jamie was just telling me before that he... Congrats uh, on the new show. Oh, Thank thanks. You, have you not been on yet? Oh, yeah. Nope. No, not yet. It's awesome. The, I was telling Sam before I came on the Gary Busey episode, I was dying. <laughs> oh, I didn't realize you hadn't been on yet. I thought you had. Uh-uh. No. Nope. I know. It seems like I've been here a lot. Every time I'm coming here, people are like, you're here again? <laughs> but it's been months. Yeah. Yeah. I saw you on UFC Unfiltered, so maybe I'm thinking oh, of right, yeah, yeah. Yep. I was, uh, we were talking before the show, and Jamie uh, was going through sleep paralysis right before he got here. Oh, that's that thing where you wake up and you're like, I, I, you're like, mm, to weird <laughs> buzzing. It feels like like you can't move, right? No, I couldn't get out of the dream. Like oh. I was trapped in the dream. I but knew you were I was aware of the dream. That, yeah, yeah. And I was like trying to get to Maine, and I kept missing flights, and the, <laughs> I couldn't type on the phone. I would type like, I'm my flight is late, and it was going like all different characters on the phone, and. I don't know why Maine, if there's any, like, dream experts listening. I am a dream expert. <laughs> you are? <laughs> yes, I am. So why do you suppose that one would dream of wanting to get to Maine but not being able to? Specifically, Maine. Because you're, you, you, you see yourself as a lobster and you're afraid that your little claws were going to be tied and you wouldn't be able to do things like the Maine lobster. And, and I was that supposed to interview Dice and it was a big deal. In Maine? Yeah. And it was like, <laughs> and I, we had a show and I was going to go before the show and interview Dice and it was supposed to be, a, it was a big deal. And like, if you're late, you're never going to get the opportunity again. You know, you're going to be fucked. You, you cannot fuck this up. And so I'm trying to text Don Jameson in the dream. Yeah. Like, can you get a hold of Dice? I'm going to be late. I'm sorry. I'm missing this flight. And I, like, I had to stay at the hotel like for an extra 15 minutes. That's why I'm running a little late because I needed to just I was so <laughs> collect yourself mad when I got up and I, my face was so creased. Like, you ever have that just whole face crease from the pillow? Where you yeah. have? I was destroyed. Jim yeah. gets that pillow crease though. He's not asleep. <laughs> no, I'm wide awake. Actually, <laughs> I'm actually being taught a lesson. <laughs> I wow, that's the... a weird. The main thing means something with dice. Why dice? Maybe because you're gambling. You're gonna go up there and gamble with some lobsters. <laughs> You're really a terrible, I'm very terrible good. dream analyzer. <laughs> no, I'm good. I think it probably has to do with the flight, but Maine and Dice are probably inconsequential. No, no. I, I think I was, well, last night I was looking for plane tickets to go to Vegas to for the UFC. There you go. It's like December 30th. 30th. Are yeah. you going to go? I'm thinking about it, and I need like only a little bit more miles to keep my status, so I need to do a, what do they call a mileage run or whatever. Yeah. And, um... And I was looking, and I saw that Dice was going to be in Vegas, but not those nights. It's like a different... So maybe he was just on my mind. Now, would you stay out there New Year's Eve or come back the morning of? I would probably stay out there New Year's Eve or fly on New Year's Eve because it's right. It's better to fly New Year's Eve because New Year's Day is crazy. Everybody's flying back, but New Year's Eve nobody's. Well, right I would now. have to fly back New Year's Eve morning because I have a t the Tarrytown Music Hall New Year's Eve. So I can't. I debated going out for that Ronda fight, but I, I get the gig the next night. Oh, so oh, you yeah. would have to literally like take that. 12:55 a.m. red eye after the fight. Is there a 12:55 red eye? Yeah, it's never Delta though, so I never take it. I didn't know that. Yeah, I think it's United. Well, you you'd go to JFK or LaGuardia. Oh, it doesn't matter right. that hour. No, it's that flight first thing in the morning. Yeah, there's there's a 1 a.m. and um, there's another one which I looked at because I thought, well, why are you doing New Year's Eve? I can't stand performing on New Year's Eve. Because of money. Is it good? And I also don't mind. I actually like to do something on New Year's Eve. Okay. I like to have a gig. Yeah. So people make it like a date night. I guess Eight comedy's show. Yeah, yeah, they're comedy's... not going to be maniacs. Plus, you probably, if you don't have New Year's plans, probably makes you feel a whole lot less depressed if you have a gig. Well, I always, I've never tried to make New Year's plans. DC Benny, I think, my buddy, comedian, I think his wedding anniversary is on New Year's Eve. I remember like 20 years ago going, what the fuck, what'd you do? <laughs> you can't work New Year's Eve. He's like, no, I know. <laughs> my wife will kill. I think it was New Year's Eve. But it's like it, it, for comedians, it's better money. So you want to work, and it's and it's also something to do. It's a festive night. You don't want to be, you don't want to feel like you're not doing anything. But it, but eight o'clock though. So you, I, all right, because usually with bands, they want you on at that time, and then they want to like drop balloons or, or confetti. Sometimes, or whatever. yeah. You have to do they, the countdown. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, I've done that in comedy clubs. I've done that many times. You have okay. You're Many not a times. countdown type of guy, I have to tell you. <laughs> I do a good job with the countdown because you, you fucking just make fun of what's on the screen. You just riff. You got to do like 10 minutes off the cuff or five that, minutes of just riffing on the right. screen. I, th I just meant literally like the enthusiastic 10, 9, 8 part. You have fun with it though, and they know that they're there to see you. So it's not like, I'm not like, come on, gang. It's, right. right. It's more fun. Um, and you just you, you just goof on the, the screen. But no, an eight o'clock show in a, in a theater is even better because a lot of times people want to go out and do whatever they want to do or they want to be home. Where they people want to do other shit, so at eight o'clock they go out dinner and a show, and then you're free to do what the fuck you want to do. 
Right, you have to get the dinner with that one menu. Like nothing else is available except That's right. that one menu. Is it yeah. pronounced prefix or is it like something fancy? Because it's spelled fancy, right? You know, I I, I call it prefix. Yeah, a prefix yeah. menu. Yeah. yeah, prefix menu. I'm yeah. sure there's a French pronunciation right. of it. The word <laughs> butchering, but prefix. <laughs> I don't think that's the way. I it have would the profit. <laughs> but that's good. You go on at eight. Yeah, people go out to dinner, then come see you, and then if they want to go home and watch the ball drop or whatever, you know, do the comedy countdown. clubs do the late show. They hand out the noisemakers. That's a whole fucking thing. They're su- people are surprisingly better behaved than they were fifteen years ago, though. Why? They don't know why. Maybe you know, because my audience is not as old as like you would think. I'm almost fifty, and my audience is not all fifty year olds. They're, That's you know, weird to me. It is weird because a lot of them are younger. <laughs> they're in their like. 30s. That makes no sense to me. I know, but it, it, sh- it shouldn't be that way. But they just are uh, no. But you're right. They they are actually. You think they'd all be fifty and older, but they're not. A lot I wouldn't of them think that your audience would. No, I would. Th- I would say that your comedy lends itself to a younger <laughs> audience. Yeah, I'm glad it does. You're talking about like fucking and shit and stuff like that. I don't talk about shit. Well, sometimes there's shit involved in your comedy. No, only my radio host. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. I can't, yeah, there's a little fecal mud. I can't. <laughs> but, you know, they, uh, they're they not they're, they're not as crazy as you'd think. Like, yeah. I would have thought they'd be maniacs. Speaking of shit, I went to see <laughs> Sandler, Swartzen, Spade, oh, yeah, they're and doing, Snyder. They're I went, doing that tour, right? Yes. Yeah, four have, S's? <laughs> Is yeah. It? Yeah, you're Sandler, right. Schwartz, and Spade, and even the Schneider. opener kid was Sandler. I wonder if he's related to Adam, and that's why he got like the opening slot. But anyways, there we were going in, and kids were in the audience. Like little kids were going in, and the whole show was sex and shit. <laughs> like there wasn't a lot of other that must topics. sell out, right? It was not. It was packed. It was an arena packed to the gills. Like even nosebleeds. Because uh, the uh, little kids go, because they're used to seeing like grown ups and stuff like right. that. Right. And then parents are walking out like halfway through, like, and they're like, "Where are you going?" And they're, you know, because it's it was filthy. I was an really adult su- show. Yeah, I was really surprised at how filthy it was, but the show was That's great. It's great that it's filthy. Oh, yeah. I mean, but like, you would think that they. I guess you couldn't expect them to do research because to those of us who know these guys, like Nick Swartzen is filthy. Adam Sandler, anybody that knows anything he's done before Grown Ups knows that he's filthy. Yeah, you know, like all like uh, Rob Schneider is Deuce Bigelow, male Gigolo, like all all of them. Boy, fucking Nick must kill him. Those guys. Nick, he, Nick's a good stand-up man. Yeah, he killed. Yeah, of and course every he did. every every one of them had a diarrhea bit, but it was different <laughs> and inventive. Like you know, we've heard a lot of diarrhea bits, a lot of farting bits, but they all had their own take, and I was surprised because I went with Craig Gass, so I like to watch the other. How comedian. ironic, <laughs> Craig Gass and <laughs> <in> the diarrhea <laughs> bit. <laughs> so I like to watch his reaction. He's cracking up the whole time because it's like when you go to a show with a band, dude. Every dude is like, you've seen it. You're 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 like, okay, right? You know, how many concerts can you really see? Every some bands do the same banter every show for like ten years, every in between song. But these guys, they're all the sets. Were you guys new. having a good time? <laughs> Yeah, circle pit. How okay. much time are they doing? What are they doing? A half hour each, or no, less than that? It's gotta be. What? What? Sandler do forty five? No, I think they all did a half hour, and Sandler did an hour. That's a long show. Because he does songs and stuff. Okay. It was really long. Like I was surprised that everybody hung in there. And I mean, sure, Sandler had his idiot hecklers, like people that like five minutes in, they're yelling Hanukkah song and shit. It's like, dude, listen to the new set because yeah. he's. They all had notes. I like that he's um, still doing stand up. Yeah, him. me too. Yeah, it was great. I was I was psyched. And he was sick, and he was drinking tea, and you could hear it in his voice, but once he got to the end of the show with the songs, he was, like, pitch perfect. He can, he can really sing. Did he do Hanukkah song? Yeah, he did the classics at the end. Uh, I think he did a little bit of Lunch Lady and a little bit of Hanukkah. I don't know Lunch Lady. You don't know Lunch Lady Land? Lunch Lady no, Land? No, I don't. It's great. It, yeah, it's, it's awesome. But Swartzen really killed. And Rob Schneider, he's, like... He was salty when we went backstage. Mm-hmm. He's, he, I probably, should I say this on the you radio? You should, yeah. Okay, he's he's salty. Like, Is he? And I, I really respect that because, like, when you get to be that age, like, what is he? He's got to be, what, 54, 55? I don't know if I know him. I don't think I've ever met yeah. Rob Schneider. He's probably definitely oh, in his 50s. I can't wait for you to meet him then <laughs> and see what your reaction is. <laughs> Why? Because he's at that age where, and I can't wait to be that age, where you can just literally say anything you want to anyone, and you're probably not going to get punched in the face. Like... In music, if you say certain things, there's a good chance you could still get punched in the face. Whereas in comedy, you guys are such savages. You can say whatever you want. Like someone's dead five minutes and you guys are just destroying them. Trying to figure out what the best joke is here. Yeah, We could never do that. Like 
And so we go back there. We're trying to take a picture, and uh, and Rob Schneider's like, "Just take the fuck." You know, Craig wanted to do some like silly like band shot, and he's like, "Just take the fucking picture." All right. I hate when people do. It. And we thought he was joking at first, but he wasn't. He's just salty. Wow. And you like that? Yeah, I loved it. <laughs> I said, I said Schneider's coming in hot. Watch out. And then <laughs> Craig's like. Well, you know, was, I thought it would be, you know, and he's like, you're a fucking comedian. You should know better. Wow. Yeah, I mean, Rob Schneider <laughs> reprimanding Craig Gass Do they as a know comedian? each other or no? No. Because. Oh, How do you know he's a comedian? Because check this out. We're, we're, we're talking to, to Nick. At first we go backstage and there's nobody back there. It's so much different than a rock show. And this is an arena show. I'm thinking Spade's going to. Actually, Spade did have babes back there. But everybody else was quiet, right? Mm -hmm. So. We're walking through the hallway and it's quiet and Nick is in there icing his knee and he's in his underwear and I'm telling Craig like this is not a good time you know like we we should probably bounce and Craig's like hey Nick and is it a good time and he's like dude you know and look at me I'm in my underwear <laughs> my my knee is shot <laughs> no so, is the answer right, so, so so we're like all right we'll we'll see you after and then we go so so we go in the hallway and we're talking after the show and you know he Nick absolutely killed it I think he got probably one of the best reactions of the night and C Craig is talking and Schneider's walking up and he's like I can hear your voice from down the hallway whatever and and he's like you're a comedian and he's like yeah you know my name's Craig and blah 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 and he's like I, yeah I, I could have guessed and so that was the first indication that God he was gonna damn. be. That he was gonna be salty, and you get excited when people are kind of dicks. Yes. Yeah, you like that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I have to be so nice. Like in the music business, you have to be so nice. Yeah. You really do. But I think in comedy, if you're at that arena level, like who? Why the? F you don't have to be nice. Yeah, but I, you should. And Rob Schneider doesn't exactly have a great reputation. Oh yeah, he's coming out doing Trump jokes. Like he's his his he was doing like reservation like Native American jokes. At Mohegan Sun, that were kind of edgy, and that you know people were like, Ugh, but it was. But he did. He he's ballsy. Yeah, he I don't know. His, I don't Craig know. Craig I, I like his daughter a lot. She's awesome. Have you King, take, she's fucking great. That's his daughter. Yeah. Yeah. She's she had awesome. that big single. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. She's like a blonde singer. Yeah. Yeah. She's great. I actually, oh, no I, I, I watch her sing acoustic. I really dig Ugh. her. I do. She's great. That's what you spend your time doing. There's a lot worse things I could do with my time, Sam. That's the healthiest thing I do. I Google a young lady with a lovely voice. But um, he killed. Schneider killed. How right? would you feel, Jim, if you're back there and you decide to take a photo and Rob Schneider said, Jim, you're a comedian. You should know better. It would depend on what I was doing, but I would probably have a, an unpleasant response. But would, I, I wouldn't do that during a photo. I would say, let's just take it. Right. I take them fast. I don't try to get the guys to do anything. I just try to get them to look in the same Semi direction. Oh, I'm looking. Pull up at. my Instagram. I mean, he looks smiley. He, we look like we're having a great time. You would never. Are you sure think... he wasn't being just sarcastic and breaking balls? He maybe he might be a ball breaker. He might just be a guy who's like an asshole, but in a fun way. Or no, I don't know. He seemed pretty salty. Go down a little bit. There he is. Like, like it's a fun picture, right? Like we're hanging out. Everybody's like, just having a good time. Look at that crew. That's a hard crew. Did, did Rob Schneider keep that smile on his face for long? No, he really <laughs> he went to the ice, <laughs> ice grin and and. Did you guys meet Adam? No, we didn't get to meet Adam, and it, it, you know I, Why? I was bummed. Well, he had his whole family there because oh. I guess he split time between Brooklyn and Manchester, New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. So he's kind of like right in the middle there sure. in, in Mo, at uh, Mohegan Sun, um, and you know everybody's there's aunts and uncles and cousins and stuff. But was, uh, was Craig annoyed at, that Rob Schneider? Was reprimanding him? No. Craig understands what people go through on the road, and everybody you know, is allowed to have a bad day, and, sure. and he's a pro, and he's always happy and upbeat and is a really cool he dude. He really is a good dude, Craig Gass. Yes. Yeah, he's a, yeah, he's a fun guy, man. I, I like Craig a lot. Really, really nice guy. Um, oh, man. I only met Adam one time. He came into the Comedy Cellar with Kevin James recently. He was very nice. I mean, but it was a very brief... I saw Kevin James do stand-up not too long he's ago. He's funny, man. Kevin's a fucking... He was, he's a really good stand-up. But he did, like, a theater... And he only did like forty minutes, and he was gone. Maybe he's uh, he was just out the door. Maybe that's all the material that he was. My only guess is that he hasn't maybe been doing it as actively because I remember I remember when he was about to break. I remember seeing him at the comic strip one night, and he came off. He had murdered, and there was a bunch of agents around. It was like you know you could just sense when there's something happening for a guy. It was before. It was the, I think I auditioned for the King and Queens not long after that. It was like you just knew something was happening for this dude because of all the the excitement when he came off and all these guys in suits around him. 
And he was a very, very funny stand-up. So maybe yeah. he stopped it a little bit, and maybe he's doing more. Just working just get, up towards. Just getting back yeah. into it. Yeah, I'm guessing maybe he wants to shoot a special or something. Yeah, maybe. Because, mm-hmm. you know, when you're doing $100 million films, all right. Yeah, I you kind of put like stand-up on the side for a little while? <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I don't blame him, but he was a really good stand-up. He wasn't a guy that got lucky. Like, he was a fucking solid act. Yeah. Yeah. His brother's funny, too. Gary Valentine's a very funny stand-up. They all break each other's balls, like, in their sets, too, which is great. Uh-huh. They're totally aware of themselves and their current, you know, films and what's going on. So you don't, you just don't get to have any of that meanness in the music industry. Well, you, you really, you can't. I mean, our industry's shrinking, and like everybody you see on the way up is who you see on the <laughs> right. Decline. Oh, yeah, we're, sure. all, we're all declining, you know, uh, whether we like it or not. But <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just funny because like hardcore music, you would think is like screaming and aggression and. Uh, and comedy is just like guys telling jokes and stuff, but then you get back and the musicians are the ones that are all like, hey, you know, that was Because they're getting nice. it out on stage. Yeah. Oh, that's, and, and the comedians have to be nice on stage yeah. and fun or We're whatever. We're smiley clown fruits. <laughs> you're out there screaming and you're nice and relaxed afterwards and, you know, off stage we're just... Drunk. Yeah, it's very therapeutic. And I actually read this thing recently that said screaming is the same sort of reaction chemical-wise in your brain as laughing. Really? So... I'd like if anybody experts are out there. I get a in. good scream out every day. I do scream therapy. You do? Yeah. Ah! <laughs> Does that count? Yeah, it was a scream. I was you a... bring TVs <laughs> with a baseball bat. <laughs> What's that place you can go to where you can do that? I want to go there. Anthony Cumia's house. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you ever... Wait, what's the uh, hardcore fan base like have they become more inclusive of everything or is it still like no we have our stuff like for like do you think like like Kanye we were talking to who is it Sebastian Bach about Kanye right. and he was kind of being like fuck Kanye because and... of his way he handled his tour exactly exactly oh yeah yeah Kanye gets a lot of flack but I think see I don't know I'm so far removed from that <clears throat> like real underground hardcore scene it used to be that we were anti all that stuff. Like you didn't need the three hundred dollar pair of sneakers and right. And that stuff was silly. Like why would you pay that much money for something that's made in China for like two dollars? It literally makes no sense. But of it's course, a, it's a status symbol. It's it's like it has some social currency. Like if you're walking down the street and you see some guy wearing uh, the Kanye uh, sneaker Yeezys, Yeezys, um, you go oh. Maybe he makes a lot of money, or maybe he waited in line for three days and camped out. I I just go, you're a fool. Like, yeah, you're like, I mean, no, you're not a fool. I mean, I can't. You, you can't really judge someone. I want Doctor Ingalis. <laughs> oh no, Doctor Ugolino. Oh yeah, I thought you were supposed to get some for the I don't special. know where they are. I never heard anything. Doctor Ugolino. I wanted some Doctor Ugolinos. <laughs> Come on, what is Jim that? wants to wear uh, bootleg Yeezys on his <laughs> <laughs> special. But they have to be seventy dollars or under bootleg Yeezys. Oh, these are bootleg ones. <laughs> Dr. Ugolini, yeah. But, I should have ordered them. I didn't know where to get them. I was so stupid. We're in a situation right now in the country where, especially when the economy kind of takes a dip, where people are so desperate to to uh, act like they have this social status or social currency with brands and jewelry. And, and that's the whole hip-hop thing, right? Like, there, like if you, what's the hip-hop current, uh, like, go-to subjects it's usually like how yeah. great I girls am. and Gr- fucking cars has right. always and, been and money club my whatever. rhymes are better and yeah. so pandas people, people could say the same thing about heavy metal but it, there's a lot of different heavy metal there's there's stuff that's fantasy based where you could hear bands singing about vikings and dragons and then there's stuff that's personal about you know the singer's narrative his life or whatever and, and that's the hip-hop that i like is the stuff that's not like oh look at me i'm better than you i like the stuff that's socially aware and trying to like bring people up and not create this divide like I'm better than you because I make more money. Well, hip hop revolution got uh. started years ago when it was guys like LL <laughs> Cool J, guys like Big Daddy K and Run DMC, they were all doing like it's Craig Shankle raps. You're giving Dr. Ugolini such a nice plug right here. But the newer rap has gotten like very angry Craig. and different like Craig guns and shooting and things like that, like with the West Coast, East Coast beef. Nobody wants to know your fucking trivia, dude. You don't like Craig discussing rap. No. <laughs> No, I hate all when Craig comes in like a hip hop historian. Well, these are twelve hundred bucks. No, Doctor Ugolini's were cheaper. They were seventy bucks. Yeah, they, I'm not paying 
That kind of money for Dr. Ugolini. Well, those are real. So, but what, why is it? Why do you want that? Is that so a girl who's very shallow looks no, he wants, down at your I sneakers? I want to point out. He wants fake ones. Oh, no, I want okay. fake ones. No, but why does like the random uh, kid today? I'll tell you off air. I can't say it on air. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, actually. I don't know. Because they're it's cool. It's status. Yeah, it's like anything else. It's like it's every, anything else that's ever been cool. Same reason why fucking, you know, in, in the 80s, people were growing their hair out long because... Brett Michaels grew his hair out long. Like it's like you know what I mean? It just it's stuff the, gets it's the horde mentality, the the mat like the, the, the sheep following the one uh Yeah, it's just cool. Like that's what's cool now. <laughs> so that's what you that's what you do. I don't know, man. It seems so silly. I, I just I, it's just not my thing. But you know, hey, credit to Kanye for making a shit ton of money and influencing people like that. I guess that, you know, when you have power over the masses like that, you have to respect it a little bit. But like it we were in school kind of sure. sad. Like starter jackets were the shit. That's because right. What, well, what price did he pay for all this? Now he has like mental health problems, right? We had them before. He did? Oh, of course he did. You don't run up in either that or drinks too much. You don't run up and take Taylor Swift's fucking award. Let's just something you're a, a narcissist drinker. I, I can only I, I heard he was drunk that night or maybe he said maybe I'm he wrong. Said, but yeah, he's just a no, I, I don't think you're gonna you know get sued for saying someone's a narcissist. He gets <laughs> us to talk about it on the radio. I want to uh, see uh, yeah like because it's weird uh, to, to have some Kanye is not really respected by metal necessarily, especially hardcore, right? Right. Yeah. Well, if if you look at just the music, the guy is prolific. I mean, the output. I love Kanye and the quality. I'm a fan. Okay. Yeah. So he's you know that yeah. So you know the quality and the output is. Something Incredible. to behold. Yeah. It's it's that's a lot. And finding other talent, right? Like he's oh, found yeah. a lot of other talent that has so you when you have your finger on the pulse of something like that, you're obviously being uh you're, you're like being, we do on this radio show. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we when we picked up Teft. He's like the Scott Brocious of radio. <laughs> we picked him up Brocious. off the <laughs> Oakland A's scrap <laughs> 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 Yeah, I mean he's been at the forefront of that genre of music for a long time. Like he kind of sets the pace. Kanye does. Yeah, yeah. And as far as sounds, but like, like his you... sound library, like it, just incorporating different sounds. I mean, for people who make beats or 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 produce hip hop or get you know those types of performances out of people, I'm sure he has a ton of respect from. But like your audience. Well, it's he's it's just not on a lot of ours radar. Oh, but I don't know. For the there you there was a time where when I was getting into hardcore, there was a lot of crossover with hip hop. Like you, it was okay to like MOP and Mob Deep and and uh, you know early Fifty Cent. And there was a lot of I I think uh, camaraderie there. Especially there's a lot of great underground hip hop like Jedi Mind Tricks and yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Ill Bill. And, That's different. You know, guys who respect. What we do and vice versa. Club Astro Belly Bell, uh, cool but they're G. not singing not about the you know the club and the bling and things like that. So right, it's, right. I, I mean, Amen. hardcore also it's unisex, bro. We were relegated to one area of town for a long time. Like if we go play Detroit, we play in a in a very low income area. Same with New Haven, Connecticut, where I grew up and where I used to go to shows. The club was not in the suburbs. Like it is now, right? Like when we used to go play DC, we would play Safari Club. It was deep in the hood. It's not like out in Annapolis, Maryland, or right. Bethesda, like it is now, right? Um, so once metal and hardcore music started to make money and became popular, and kind of like there was a minute where we were on the sort of, I guess you could call like the mainstream radar, right? Then we could start doing House of Blues and stuff, but. Uh, but I don't know what the modern scene is like. I'll, I'll see, like I saw flyers in my town the other day for a show at a VFW hall, and it was all like, you know, they gave the descriptions like straight edge hardcore band, punk from Massachusetts or whatever. And I was like, that's cool. Kids are still making flyers and doing shows at VFW halls, and God bless them. But I don't know if they're into, you know, this sort of crossover into the Kanye world. Are you ordering some of those? I'm looking at the. Don't I, do it. Those are perfect. They look, do they look like Yeezys? Yes. They're like, very close? Yeah. They're close enough. 30 bucks? They're close enough, but if you really looked at them, you could tell they were like shitty bootlegs, oh, which good. is what you want. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, but I mean, they do look something like them. Uh, yeah, 100%. Okay, how, I don't know what size I'll be. How much are they? They're $20.99. Okay. <laughs> I want <laughs> I want to get, uh, well, are, what Yeezys, size? are Yeezys unisex? Yeah. Yeah, look, these women sizes. What size sneaker do you wear? It, it it varies, man. Oh like between, God. hold on, I, I can't. So I have difficult. fat feet. I know it's hard for me to buy footwear. You shouldn't be saying that mockingly. Oh, you get the wide, I get the wide. So yeah, it's yeah. where I need my condoms. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> I'll order a few pairs. Um, you want me to send you the link? No, can you, I'll give you my credit card. Can you order them? Yeah. You're getting and, a woman's and, knife. I have to give you my... Uh, and get that overnight shipping, too. I need it overnight shipped. Uh, Ship it overnight, aid. What do you need? Do you need my... Uh, yeah, when's your special? You need special? your credit can card. I still go? This Saturday. For money to pay for it. And your address. I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be... Because you're probably getting punished for the guest list, right? It's fine. Everybody... I don't mind. It's low. It's New York. You sure? Mind. Yeah, 100%. You're not right. having like 300 guests. I have a lot of guests, but it's okay. It's over two shows. You're welcome to come. Okay. Trust me. Thank you. It's fine. Aid, you what do you need? <laughs> Babe? <laughs> 80 baby. Get the, get the grayish ones, the charcoal. Or wait, you're going to get the No, black. you got to get the black okay. ones. Yeah, because they'll match. Um, get me some. <laughs> you can wear those in your special. If I, 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 I'm going to see how they feel, but yeah. You got to, dude. You have to. Who gives a fuck how they feel? It'll be so funny. I have to. Uh, Plus, also, it'll be like a nice shout out to the radio show listeners. They're going to know. Yeah, I know that, but this goes. Uh, well, I can't say what network it is, but let's just say it's not just going to be seen in the U.S. That's um, awesome. You're gonna be a I want to have men's sevens. Do they do half sizes? Half slice? Yeah. Start at the bottom down here. Men's sevens. Yeah, they got they got eight and a half, six and a half. No seven and a half. No seven and a half. How about Sold men's seven, out. men's eight, and then see if you can find them in men's seven and a half. Seven and a half. Could you imagine if they did this with cars? Like you could get a knockoff like what? Mercedes. Yeah. They did it right with the with the one that looked like the Bentley. What was that? Oh, I know exactly what you're right? talking about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and every dude was big pimping in it. Right. Like I you would hear it at every light, like with a system. And you look and you have to do a double take. And I think Bentley was like, shut it down. Like they're like, you no, can't, you this can't. is illegal. <laughs> oh, I love this. Oh, Jim is paying twenty dollars for Yeezys. What's wrong, Travis? I'm just shocked that he has size seven and a half feet. They're such little boy feet. <laughs> it's I, the tiniest seven feet I've and ever a had. half? Seven, seven and a half, and eight. Yeah, I don't know how they fit. They might be big. Seven sometimes. and a half is children's shoes. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then also get eight and eight and a half. Get me four pairs. Because again, I, I only have one shot at wearing them. I have wide feet. Um, but they're they, short? I, yeah, I've done talking about my feet for years. How do you not pay attention to my foot talk? Seven and a half is just. I gave a TED talk on feet. <laughs> oh, I didn't realize. <laughs> I didn't realize. And eight point five. Give me four pairs of the exact same ones. Let me see. I got to do. This is my credit card. My billing information is a little different, though. Okay. Let me write Give me your billing. billing information. Just say it on the air. <laughs> oh, this is great. This is great. So, Jamie, when you when you go to Jim's special, yeah. you'll be able to see the knockoffs. The knockoff Yeezys. The bags too, right? Like, that's a big deal. Like for women, they want the like the fake six thousand dollars. Yeah, you bag. get them out on the street. Yeah, but right. even the fake ones, like a fake six thousand dollar bag, is still like a couple hundred bucks. It is. Like you're not paying thirty dollars for it. You're paying like, two, three, four hundred dollars. And that's to like show other hoes, like, look, I'm like top ho. Right. Like I have this. I'm better than you. Like look at my dope bag. It's not because oh I have all this stuff that needs to fit in this bag and I have to carry around. Well, no, I mean you could carry a garbage bag if that were the point. <laughs> like there was some rapper who said real G's move in silence and I was like, yeah, there you go. Yeah, like, you're not that flashy. Might the, that might have cool D said that won't <laughs> Stop the referencing. You only know three rappers, Craig. I know a lot of rappers. <laughs> cool D, I had that tape. That was he Curtis was great. Blow, King to Blow, Big Daddy Kane. Cool. See, that's the stuff that you know, yeah, he was like, fucking fresh. Like, especially like uh, what was um, growing up, I had what was there another tape I had, um, Eric B and Rakim. Yeah, I remember those guys. That's the real shit. Yeah, Rakim. They they did uh, painted full was a very big record for them, but the Everybody real fifty set was on the back of that one. <laughs> Everybody knows that. And the Ghetto was a very good song too. Which well, so, is called the ghetto. Elvis's first was the ghetto. Rags to the riches. Who was that? That that was great. I don't know, Craig. Who was it? I don't want to say his name because you don't he came know. a negative image. <laughs> <laughs> so do you ever uh, like deal with people that might want to like? Because like you're kind of one of the the big dudes in hardcore music. You're one of the kings, I would say. Oh, stop. Do you ever deal with dudes that might want to like hide some of their musical tastes around you? You know what <laughs> I, I mean? I like 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 maybe somebody shows up in like. Uh, uh, a one shirt, but wears another one when you're around. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Would like, that make someone a weenie? <laughs> <laughs> like, a, like, would you refer to that person as a posier? Someone uh, hit me up. They were at a Weezer show, and mm -hmm. Weezer did like a, a hate breed version. Like they had a Weezer shirt with a hate breed logo, mm -hmm. like the 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 flame logo, but it said Weezer. And I was like, I love Weezer, and they're like, you do? And I'm like, yeah. Like I don't believe in any of that like guilty sure. pleasures. In yeah, music. you like what you like. Yeah, right. But what if what if like Somebody showed up in a Kanye hoodie, right? 
and then before you got here, put that hoodie away <laughs> and sh- wore like a hardcore t-shirt. Would you be like, what are you doing, dude? Uh, yeah, you see those people sometimes like in the meet and greet. Like they'll wear something and they obviously want you to say something about are it. Are they kind of weenies, do you think? No, I think they're just having fun with it. Are they having fun with yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Like if you see like, well, I don't know. Like one time <laughs> this guy was in the meet and greet with a Nickelback shirt on, but not ironically. Right. Like just was fully repping Nickelback at the show, and I get, I was like, hey, respect. You right. Know, if you're if you're that into somebody, see, he's down with the core. He's got his main shirt on. Yeah, I yeah. mean, well, Derek's a real dude. Yeah. He's down with Derek. He's a hardcore. Derek, dude. He's a hardcore guy. Who's Bane? I don't even know who Bane is. I know, I know from the uh, the Batman movie. Right. Cool G rap. That was the tape. <laughs> yeah, I played that tape out. What year was that? I'm gonna guess that was like 1985. Cool Nobody G- needs you to guess. Like cool. these kids now, they have Soldier Boy. Come on, Cool G Rap destroys that shit. Go listen to Cool G Rap. Him and Melly. Learn about the history. Him right. And, and respect the originators. And Grandmaster Bar. Remember Barley Ball, who used to have his thing? They did that rap. Oh, yeah, I know. I know, Craig. I know. He was on 107.5 I know. WBLS. <laughs> Fine. I know. It's all good. Hip hop history. What's going on, D Bay? Who's yeah, Bane? I don't I'm, know who Bane is. I'm under the impression that you've been discussing me a bit. I don't know who Bane what are you is. Talking I'm about? asking you who Bane is. Bane is a hardcore band from New England who've been around for like. Now, did they break up? Are they years. done now? They they went on like their hiatus tour for like three years, <laughs> and then they finally played their last show and worse there at the Palladium a few months ago. Oh, that must have been insane. It was nuts. Yeah, I went. It was crazy. That's crazy. See, I, I, I'm still fully into all those old records. Like, I can go back and I can listen to it, but I'm not nostalgic. Like, I don't get. Like, I don't wish it was like it was then. Now, mm-hmm. I think now is the best time, and I'm fully happy, like, with how everything is now. Mm-hmm. But with bands like that, I sometimes I'm envious that they can still do, like, the no barricade shows and the small shows because at a Bane show, you, their fans are respectful of one another, and they kind of, like, I mean, I don't know. I, I shouldn't say because I haven't been to a Bane show in 15 years or whatever, but I, I'm, I would imagine that everybody's having a good time, whereas... Our music is just different enough and just metal enough where if we were to do a show like that, someone's going to get hurt, I'm going to get sued, It's <laughs> right. and it's not, you know, no one's going to sue the guy from Bane. I mean, I love I love Aaron, all those guys are great, but no one's going to like, you know, no girl's going to get her teeth kicked in and say, I want to sue the band, whereas with me, it's that a different could story. Why wouldn't they sue them, just because they're an underground band? Yeah. There's no money either. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe, I mean, if they went on a three-year Farewell tour. There's ah. probably some money. Well, it was always the last tour, and then it was, oh. you know. But hardcore has a thing about they're you know they're they're kind of like quiet about the money, you know. Whereas I don't give a fuck. Like you, uh, we we can't. Yeah, you, we can't go. Do they don't shows. want you to. Th- they don't want you to know that they're making money. Well, I don't know. I just think that they're just they're they they're worried about what the audience is gonna say if it's more about money. Um, you don't worry about that, though. No, I... I, I you got look, the fucking NASCAR hat on. You got the logo <laughs> plastered on. No problemo. Look, it's... When you're... I'm going to be 40 next year, and my daughter's, you know, a teenager. There's college to pay for. There's there's real-life responsibilities that involve money. Right. Um, but if you're a 19-year-old kid, and you're in a hardcore band, and you live with your parents, and you can tour in a van, um, God bless you. That You know, that's... I support it. I'm, I'm fully into it. I'm just in a different position. Totally. Are you cold? <laughs> so they think that I. So I wore a Kanye West hoodie this morning. Oh, you and, did? And they think that I took it off to impress can we, you. Can we see it? But I wear. Hold on. Can we see it? I don't, hold on. I haven't seen it. How like, much was the hoodie? It was expensive. Okay. But, the, but the backstory behind it but was. Why? That, why? Yeah. Just be honest. Like, yeah, is it honest. a status thing? Like, is someone going to see you in that and be like, hey, man, I like that? No, yeah. I, I, really, I really don't give a shit about that. The yeah. only reason I bought it was because mm. he did like uh. a pop up shop downtown. And I was sent as a photographer there. And mm. I got to cut this line. The line was like three blocks long. And I was like, fuck it. I might as well grab one of these hoodies. Okay. Um, Why didn't you just resell how much it for like 900 bucks? It, well, here's the, here's <laughs> how much did it cost you? It was expensive. It was like, I think it was like 100 So you paid and $100 for a hoodie? I was going to resell it. And you're going to make fun of me and be like, that's not the reason. But so it don't cut, if we do, cut, let's just let well, us do that. I, I cut the whole line. <laughs> Because I got in on a press credential, okay. and then I was like, you know what? It's kind of scummy if I sell this on eBay and I use my press credential to cut a line for four blocks long. 
So no, it's not. No, the it's scummy not. part yeah, is well, taking the hoodie, and the, the, the scummy about. part is people who will line up for this dumb hoodie. If you went, to, what do you mean? I went to journalism school. You bought a hoodie at the place yeah, you exactly. were reporting from. <laughs> but just, just, just level, <laughs> that's level not with journalistic the integrity. Is not made from like yeah. some rare. No, it's some made in China shit. Yeah, right. It's and it, I've worn it like three times since I got it. it just kind of it's in my in my <laughs> closet. I had too much journalistic integrity to resell the hoodie, but not to buy it in the first place. In my opinion, you talk about no integrity with journalists. I think that's. Bullshit, I have that. another question. Does say? he rip Any off like heard? hardcore and metal bands for his designs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did a whole tour. His Yeezy tour was like very. That's when it was all like the like '80s Metallica e looking, like with the skulls and the lightning type lettering. Yeah, he did Bieber do the same that. thing? Yeah. yeah, Bieber just did that on this tour. And he hired yeah, like all these he hired artists the rip artists. off. Like yeah. the aesthetic of hardcore metal, and then they go run with it, and they're huge. And you know, so I mean, in a way, I guess it's smart. But do you think that that like? Uh, Hi, Dave. Hello, David. David Tell. Just in. Yeah. Hi. What's up, buddy? Don't let me stop you. No, we're just going over his. Uh, well, you're very ominously dressed. You're. Uh, yeah. He. We were talking about his uh, <coughs> his sweatshirt taste and his uh, t-shirt. Do you, do you think that? I like, didn't know this was a fashion show. <laughs> no, no. I'm not saying you look bad. Just look How much was the sweatshirt? <laughs> it's like a hundred dollars. He said. It's hundred dollar sweatshirt. Oh, see, that seems like. But don't you think not that bad? If you're gonna talk about if you're gonna talk about being like a journalist, though, don't you think that like going to wrong. report on something? What are you guys doing? <laughs> I don't know. Don't you, don't you guys think that hey, Adrian, you gotta let D bag go if we're talking to him. Don't you think that buying something at the place that you're reporting on and like being a fan? I thought you were gonna say it was like three hundred fifty bucks. Like, there's, there. No. I was at some show. Maybe it was. <laughs> no. Maybe it was Sabbath. I think their hoodies were seventy five or, or eighty bucks. So I mean, that doesn't like a hundred bucks to wait in line though for four. Oh it, wow! Four blocks. Yeah, oh, yeah. People, how many hours is that? It's the Kanye pop up shop. Yeah, half the people. Most people didn't even get in. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So but you yeah. bought that and. I love that you guys are talking about merch because that's like, you know, nobody really brings it up. That's really how bands make money, right? Yeah. yeah. Am I right? I went to Kanye's tour this year before he canceled the whole thing. And it was like the whole thing was a store that he just happened to be playing he, at. The Yeezy oh, store, like, right? Like he, on every concourse, he had different merch booths. He played at the Garden. And he had, the, you know, he had like the one standard merch booth, but okay. the lines to get the merch Crazy. were like longer than, by a mile, longer than any show I'd ever been really? to. People very, missed the show because they yes. were waiting online for merch. He, he's very good, by the way, at making his stuff seem like, oh, it's important to have this, even though yeah. you don't know why you are. Because that sweatshirt I just saw is average. And that There's was, nothing great about that sweatshirt. No, and that was something that hip-hop artists kind of neglected for a while. Like, I've been to a bunch of hip-hop shows where they didn't even have t-shirts. Right. Nothing. Yeah. And um, you would think that they'd have, like, a, a scully cap, a baseball hat, uh, you know, some some CDs, some vinyl. Right. But they had nothing. So, yeah, he's smart, I guess. I think that explains his exhaustion. I mean, he's running a full tilt, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to say it's a Macy's. It's more of a Marshall's, maybe. Uh... <laughs> Sandler had a whole bit about Marshall's the other night. And, I, and then brought up Bradley's. Did you guys have Bradley's? Yeah, yes. my Bradley's. first job was at wow, Bradley's. That's no a, way! That's my a first special job. occasion. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. My mother 16. would bring me like after the dentist. We'd how go many to Bradley's? How many days did you work there before they threw you out for being creepy? No, I, I actually <laughs> was, I, I worked in menswear. Oh, you did. And I would fold shirts. I worked three hours a part time job. That was my first job ever. Was Bradley's in really? North Brunswick? Yeah. Wow. My friend Andrew Powell worked there. And you worked at Caldor after that, right? Years after that. I worked <laughs> at Caldor. Caldor. Resume builder. Shop right. <laughs> Put a bike on layaway when I was like five at Caldor. I don't think I ever got the bike. Yeah, I worked, I worked at <laughs> Krausers. Just keep putting money in and out. <laughs> So, the times were tough. So Kanye, is he back out? Because I did pray for him. You know, <laughs> I was told through Twitter to pray for him, so I did. That's did probably you? what got him Thoughts out. And yeah. got it's him hard, out. It's yeah. hard praying for a guy with a way better life than you, but I did. <laughs> Good. Good. Yeah, he's he's, he's back. He's, he's recovering. Mm -hmm. He's recovering after the sheer exhaustion. And, and Well, you know, it's also his performance. Like, uh, he's on that elevated stage, yeah. you know, which uh, is hilarious when you cancel a show from there. Did you see that? <laughs> yeah. It's like, my throat hurts. Show's canceled, and then he's got to like lower me back down. <laughs> he's got to wait until <laughs> yeah. it just goes and then tilts yeah. down. Yeah, the union got paid extra. For like, couldn't he? Couldn't he have thought that before he got on the heaven stage? It's kind of one of those things. Once you commit to being on that stage, you're yeah, committed. You're up there. That show, it's ninety minutes. I thought he should just. Yeah, he should have done something. You should have yeah. finished the show. 
You got to finish the show you're were doing. Were people aware that he was having trouble at that point? Like, were people going always, just to yeah. see the meltdown, not necessarily going to see the people show? People deserve what they get at the Kanye show. If he doesn't show up, you deserve it. Because you know that he fucks his people all the time. He doesn't give a fuck about his fans. He fucking, he, he'll short you on his show or he'll fuck him. But that's not why people, He'll make no. you wait for hours like he did at, uh... At uh, Bonnaroo years ago, he's a prick. At the festival, it, is it people a tape or a band? It's a band, but okay. it's in the well. It's a tape and a band. Okay, he's got a DJ and he's got a band, but uh, but the band is like in the crowd, like where you put a marching band at a basketball game. You know how they're in the yeah. audience, kind of. Yep. That's where he puts his band, but yeah, but it's not lit. You so don't see it. Well, that's pretty. That's perform. that's that's a weird setup because that's a pretty cool stage. Because now it looks like it's just like him talking like from heaven down to everybody. You that's know? what it is, and it moves, and like they do, like they it ends up being a mosh pit. Oh, really? Under the stage. Oh, yeah, and uh, like that way they can sell. Literally, they sell the entire floor out. Yeah. There's no stage section, so it's it's the most people I've ever seen fit into wow. Madison Square Garden because you sell the whole thing. But right. what if you're like underneath him? As he sings, so like you get to see the bottom of the stage. Yeah. That sucks. It Is lights it you, and people just they. Oh, that's they where dance. they form a mosh pit. And there's probably screens you can watch on, right? Oh, uh, yeah. So he does like the Paul Stanley. I'm gonna come out and see. Ya. Yeah, he's doing Love Gun. Yeah, <laughs> but he also like leans over the thing because he's tethered in. So he leans over the stage. He's, oh, yeah, tied he's wearing in like a leash. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's okay. tethered in. Well, that's. It, yeah. I mean, hey, that's something new. That's inventive. It's. It's. I mean, if you've been that's to a great stage. show, sometimes it's just a lot of voices over the track and oh, the yeah, mix terrible. is weird. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. so I know no. but there's some artists that, you know, have a full band and the band are like amazing session guys or, or girls that are killing it. So I was wondering, you know, if if he had a band where you could maybe had some notable names in the band where you'd be like, oh, the guy from Roots is sitting in. Was. Was. Is it an intermission in his show? No, it's ninety minutes. And oh that's maybe it. the intermission was between the two bands or between the opening act and him? No, there is no opener. Wow. There's no intermission. There's no intermission. No, because there's no stage. So where would the opener go? Oh, like, that's oh, you're right. Yeah. Where, so does, the, where does he do? Does he come down from somewhere? No, they have like the the stage moves, so it's all the way at the end of the arena, oh. and it's almost blacked out, so you don't even see the stage when you're sitting there. And smoke billows up, and so he comes onto the stage from backstage. Oh. There's no curtain, but there's like a smoke billowing up thing, so you don't see him. And then at the end of the show. They actually clear, like security guys come, and they clear the audience with flashlights out of one little area because the stage comes down, and it tilts down into that area that's now been cleared right. out, and, and he, he just walks, walks up. up. Uh, he walks out the other end of the floor. Oh, I'll be honest, would... that's pretty fucking badass. It's really yeah, cool. That's, that's cool. pretty cool to see. That's actually, he puts a lot into and, his show. And he wasn't, I'll, I'll say that. He wasn't having meltdowns on this tour right. before the last <laughs> couple shows. Like, I went, and it was 90 minutes, and it was music, and it was, like, just the show. You know what? I, I'll, I'll amend what I said, because that's right. He does put a lot into a show, yeah. and he, he yeah. doesn't want it to just be him rapping over tracks. Like, he, he has a whole fucking stage thing planned. And, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, he, he actually cares about how it looks. And there's, like, crazy lighting and the stage doing stuff, and there's colors, and some... It's, like, it's it's pretty if he, cool. If he walks to the end of the stage, though, will it tip forward or no? No. it's he, all It's all leveled out. But he will, like... Put his ankles on the thing, you know what I mean? So his feet are off the stage and he's leaning all the way forward because oh, wow. he's tethered in. You know, okay. it becomes taut. I would be, you know, I hate to be the old man in the room, but I'd be frightened that the thing would fall on me and uh, <laughs> me <too. laughs> crush yeah, death by too. Kanye. Well, let's go sit in the seats, guys. We don't need, <laughs> <laughs> we don't need general admission for this one. Are those the general admission seats? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, then there you go. That's what a pretty good go for. Like, what's the average price for a ticket? Is for general admission? It's yeah, not like, a million dollars, Chip. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> Probably like uh, I could see him charging two hundred bucks for general admission. It says so twenty nine to hey, two hundred. I've bucks. never heard of a ninety minute hip hop show, so credit to him. But like if you if you look at the metal shows, like the bands that are out there doing evening with, like Machine Head does two and a half hours. And these are some of the best musicians you can see uh -huh. live in a setting, and they're. You go there and they kill it for two and a half hours. Same, same with Anthrax. Anthrax is going he out. Could, ninety minutes feel short. It like does? he could, he could do more than ninety. Because he has that many songs. Yes, that you know, absolutely. He like the Gold everything. Digger one and the everything. I mean, you, there's songs that I heard that I didn't even know it was him. Right. But uh, no, he's got like something like seven albums or so, and like all of them have a lot. You of ever hits. hear Diamonds Are Forever? Yeah, I've heard that one. He sure. did. He did. One he other does thing. A retail one other thing I'll say about Kanye too is where I don't know if this is still like this in hip hop, but it used to be like if your song came out like nine months ago, it was old and passe. Where his stuff kind of has 
um, shelf life. Yeah, where... he did a, whole, a ton of old stuff. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Is like... that still like that in hip hop? Where like a yeah. song, like if you were, if I came in here and I was listening to Lean Back, you'd be like, bro, that was That's, that would be terrible. Right. Okay. But it's almost it's also like now, like it's it's that with artists and songs. So like an artist will come out with a song. You have and, to stay current. And once that song is done, the song and the artist are done. Like, what happened to the panda guy? Hey, that's what that I'm talking about. That was huge. Designer. And I, my buddy works in the hip-hop industry, and he's always giving me, like, the, the updates and the craziness. And I said, yo, your boy, your pa- your dude, Panda, he's due for another hit. What happened to him? Yeah. And he's like, oh. Like, then, it's like, it's like in the 80s when, like, rock had one-hit wonders. That's yes. what's going on with hip hop right now, except it's like guys mumbling over tracks. Like mm-hmm. mumble rap is huge, right? And it's just like you'll have your hit for the most part. The best friend, best friend, that one, right? Like, that was on in my daughter's car, and I'm like, "What is this guy saying?" And it's like best friend, best friend. And I mean, he's got other songs, the panda guy, but they're not panda level. He's he's not best friend though. What no. happened to your hand? Because that guy is huge. The other guy, the what? best friend guy. What yeah. happened to your hand? What From about doing, uh, uh, what about the ringtone rappers? Remember that whole deal, like where you could get paid off the ringtone, yeah, and then it was like, you know, this is why I'm hot. Everybody had the ringtone. What happened to that guy? Right. What? Well, this is why I'm hot, guy. Yeah. I don't remember who sang that song. Who's huh? Mims. Mims. See, maybe. Yeah. In, he's in over. hardcore and metal, it's totally different. If you made a record 30 years ago, they're like, we just want to hear that yeah. record from 30 years ago. <laughs> Like Iron Maiden, they come out, they have to play the record from 30 years ago. Like yeah. a hardcore band, the kids will go to the show, they want to buy the shirt from the record that's 30 years ago, 25 years ago. They're, they're you know, the new material you play like one or two, but you've got to stick to the old <laughs> shit. You have to. How did you hurt yourself doing kettlebells? Dave's Are injured. we changing topics? I thought it was white guys talking about rap <laughs> all, all day, all night. <laughs> Go ahead. Any other thoughts on, the, on, on rap? We're analyzing the culture as a whole. Uh, yeah, I had, yeah. had what a good-natured <laughs> talk on rap. Uh, I, I have a question before we get into my thing. It's like, uh, do you have problems since you do like big arena shows? Like, do you have problems with people with phones in the crowd? Like, do you have a problem with that, or do you like that? No, no. And actually, we we rarely get to do arenas. Like, we did one last year with, we did an arena tour with Slipknot, and that was right around, I think, that time where the guy from Disturbed David was giving people a hard time, or Corey, no, Corey from Slipknot, I think, was giving people a hard time about the phones. I don't mind it. I don't care, because I feel like, in a weird way, people... They, they cherish those videos. And right. even though it's horrible quality and horrible sound, they'll go back and look at that and be like, oh, I had a great time at that show. So, Do you ever find yourselves, because I, I went to go see a show with uh, Jay Okerson, and uh, I What'd saw you say? Uh, it was corn, and like everybody in the front row, uh, like I hadn't been in the show in years, so I was like, well, I wonder what it's going to be like. And everybody in the front row had their cameras out, and like the performers, I really had no choice but like to perform to both the crowd and to the phones. Yeah. So it kind of like changes the whole like uh, I guess you could say experience when you know that like these people are really like you know it's it's like a uh, it, I've never seen that you know it's, it's in bad. comedy we hate it. I, yeah, I'll, well, I'll that's just you don't want the jokes leaking. Yeah, like, yeah. Like then once they see the joke, it doesn't work as well. Music get different. There are musicians vibe. that hate it though. Like oh, Jack yeah, yeah, Jack White like has security guards running through his shows the entire show, of course getting everybody with their phones to I be love put that. away. I think that's the right way to go. We yeah. change the set every night for that reason. Because then people go to setlist.com and they want to see the set and that's so we just do a completely different set every night. That way if you you do have a video of the entire show, uh, you're not necessarily going to get that same show, that's, but with corn, that's it's kind of sad because their shows used to be off the hook. Like no, it still was off the hook. But oh, I'm just saying, like bouncing and going crazy. Oh yeah, yeah. Like Do you like corn? Uh, well, I I like to go to a uh, uh, yeah. Actually, I you know I I know them from the past, and like uh, I don't really go to shows, so it was cool that you know he asked me to go. But I it's such a different you know experience now when you see all these phones out, right. you know. They and, ripped it. They killed it. Yeah, yeah. Where they totally killed them? it. Yeah. Yeah. Where were they? At the, uh, I guess it was the Bowery Ballroom or okay. one of those places. And, and uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> in comedy, though, like if the minute some guy pulls out a phone like that, you know, it changes the whole dynamic. That's it different. A different. Yeah, we hate it. Comedians really hate it. Some, yeah. But, yeah, some musicians do. Prince hated it for a while. He was, you know. Danzig will go after you. He'll go in the crowd. <laughs> he will. <laughs> pull up that video. Danzig will be like, you, you motherfucker. But, like, what, yeah. is, like, what do they care for? I, I get that it, it's, it, it's hard to fight the... The, the, it's gonna happen. It's distracting. So you're you're okay with it then? Not, right? No, not during comedy. So then ju- get more on my side with this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind. And then we'll as, talk about my hand if you want. For music, <laughs> I don't mind it as much, just because you, for music, you're not the song people know and love the song. It's not gonna hurt. But your you think, enjoyment yeah. of the song. You're trying to. Perf- you, it is gonna hurt your enjoyment of the song. Like if you're there, like it definitely you can't experience something if you're recording it. 
You can't maybe, but I, I mean, like, meaning, it's, no, it's a totally I don't different. mind if someone else is recording. It doesn't bother my, I don't care if other people are recording. But most, a lot of musicians, like, feed off of the experience that the audience is having. Yeah. So they want you to be experiencing it, and when you put your phone up, you're like, are you doing this for now or for later? We're doing this right now. That's what, that's what I this. thought was weird, but Korn totally did an awesome job. It, it's, it's just that, you know, in the comedy world, when the phones go up, it becomes a different show. It's yeah. almost like this person is, like, is it a fan or is this person a troll? Like, you don't know. Right. And, like, especially Jim and I, like, we're always working on new stuff. So if it's not, like, a big, big show and it's just, like, a club show, you're like, you know, what's this about? Right. You know, have a good time and then, you know, that's it. You know, right. Instead of, like, you know, trying to capture the moment. It doesn't work in comedy. Right. And For, bigger comics than I agree with me on this, so. You know. Well, I know, I mean, Amy, comedy, Amy wouldn't have any phones up at all and she was doing the garden. Absolutely, yeah, yeah she's smart. Yeah. You shouldn't do that. You because know? also that could go viral and then become a business, right? Like if you have some amazing bit that you haven't done yet right. and it goes viral and all these sites pick it up, yeah. those people then make those ad dollars. If it gets four or five million views, they could get a nice check. Well, and it's that's also they know your joke, though. That's the problem. That's they the problem, the too. Yeah. Right, right. Once the joke is out there before you get it on something, you know, like a CD or a yeah, special, you then, then, you, then you feel like, you know, it's already pop. You're done, you know? But um, <clears throat> I don't know. I, I feel like if you're in a band now, like you almost have to like, you know, this is just going to be a wild show, but then there's like all this, like uh, I, I guess you could say it's, it's, uh, you know, it, I think it takes some of the fun out of the experience of seeing people with their phones. Maybe it does. even if I'm in the crowd and I see it, it know? does because they yeah. would have been rocking out fists in the air or yeah. moshing or doing something else than than getting yeah. this crappy low quality video with terrible audio that 42 people are going to watch on YouTube. Eventually they'll hey, stop it's, doing it's it. Right. It's just one of those things where, like years ago, it was camcorders and you'd buy the bootlegs, and now everyone can do it. Mm -hmm. But uh, like we went to see Metallica at the Apollo years ago. Anthony made video, a couple of videos he took, and I, I watch them all the time. Like I'm so happy he has these. Great I guess videos. same here. I was just watching that. But yeah, like, that I, show was amazing. I was there. Yeah, I was at it that. Was, I was at that Metallica show, and like I'm glad that I wasn't taking <laughs> video. You know yeah. what I mean? I I'm glad that I got either. to. I watched oh, the yeah, show. No, yeah, I was too. watching Richard Christie cry. Yeah. I was Why was he crying? So many people were he likes crying. Metallica? There was a lot of people crying. I was the guy who's the guy from Insidious, the movie, uh, the actor. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, he was sitting right behind me, I was, Patrick Wilson. I, I was sitting next to him. I oh, was so in the you row right... with I was in the row with Howard and Ellis and it was wild. It was That's crazy. That's so funny. So you were Did right you ever there. Did you cry at a show? Yes. Yeah, I have. What show? I think it was Carcass. <laughs> What's that? Carcass. It was just so heavy that it brought a tear to my eye. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, you ever cry at a concert? Uh, what? You ever, cry, <laughs> you ever cry at a concert? I think I cried at the first Annie like two <laughs> Annies ago. <laughs> two Annies. <laughs> two Annies. I, I can't tell you what color she was, but I, 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 a tear rolled down my cheek. Before we move on from music completely, I just got breaking news in my headphones. Cool. That uh, uh, apparently Kanye West was just escorted up into Trump Tower. <laughs> Wow, so Donald he's is, the new Secretary of State. Yes, yes. <laughs> Donald is taking a meeting with Kanye West as we speak. I love the Kanye. <laughs> Kanye said that uh, he didn't vote, he's but if he did, he would have voted for Trump. That's what he said. So there you go. Yeah, he's like, let me talk to you about that, Kanye. I don't know. Maybe they're going to strat it because Kanye also said he was going to. It says uh, Donald he's Trump gonna... embraces Kanye West as he meets friend for 15 minutes and honors rapper by escorting him. Wow. out of Trump Tower personally. I'm sure security love that. Oh yeah. That's what I like about the new president. He's always available for, like, anything but what he's supposed to be doing. <laughs> right, right. Anybody wants to meet, want to go grab dinner. He's got a, whether it's opening a mall somewhere in Shanghai or, yeah, uh, you yeah. know, executive producing The Apprentice. Yeah. Wow. Isn't that great? He's like, oh, man, I got all this fucking shit to figure out before I'm president. <laughs> Kanye wants to say hi. Oh, oh send okay, him up. everybody. Yeah, send him up. Send an aircraft carrier to pick up Kanye. <laughs> yeah. yeah, problem is he's out of the country. No, uh, problem. no send problem. the plane. That's send okay. Send the plane, yeah. <laughs> wow. I would love to know what they talk about. Well, I think we can all experience, uh, say it right now that uh, New York City is a little different now. I mean, it's really Whoa. hard to get around. It's Whoa. really hard to get around. If yeah, Kanye comes heavy. out now and says, Donald Trump cares about black people. Oh, that's, yeah. Well, he said he was going to vote. He would have voted for him. Yeah, exactly. Right before his breakdown. You see Kanye's blonde now, too? He might No, run. that's Trump. <laughs> <laughs> he's blind, he's fat and white and blonde. <laughs> look at look at the poor Secret Service guys. They're like, oh, another four years of this kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> well, at least he, I mean, is Kanye an A list celebrity? Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. So at least Absolutely. he's getting that, and it's not like Antonio. What's his name? Hey, would have well, been great. DMX Ralph. is at the White House. <laughs> hey, well, <laughs> hey, well, at least he dressed up for the uh, to meet the president. <laughs> yeah. You mean his black crew neck sweatshirt? <laughs>
Scott Bayo or whatever. Connie's a big step up. This is great. Oh, I love this. This is um, this is what it's going to be like, guys. That's going to suck is, right? for people who live there, though. All yes. the Secret Service activity. What that's yeah. what, no, that's not heard... Kanye. That's a lookalike. Look at that. It's an imposter. No, that's that's not him. him. No? No, look at that. <laughs> By the way, Pretty you know what's funny? Kanye West. <laughs> I was thinking how much I would hate it. Like, if you live there and you get escorts and they're used to coming over. Yes, the Now shaming. with Secret Service there, like, mm. the, the security, uh, it's going to be different. <laughs> yeah, of course it is. Different security for who comes in the building. Tiffany's complaining. And then when they walk out, the uh, protesters, it's like, oh. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Tiffany's complaining because their store is there, like, in the building on the same block there. It's right. an outside entrance, but it's there. And because all the traffic is shut down and the protesters are there all the time, yeah, nobody's they, buying diamonds. There you go. That, that's nobody's what was holding everyone store. back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, they need to go to Steven Singer. That's right. <laughs> right? That's right. They tie in for our sponsor. You know, they're, uh, they're trying to spin it as a positive, all the Secret Service. They're, they caught brokers that are selling apartments in that building, mm -hmm. talking about it as the most secure building. building in New York. <laughs> yeah. In a way, they're right. Like, why shouldn't brokers use that? Like... The, the distractions of trying to sell a, a fucking apartment with all this happening, they got to spin it. Hey, I, look, we noticed 1,500 people in front of the building screaming, die. Oh, yeah, but there's extra security. They have to spin I it. I love that. T technically, you don't get the Secret Service, but they'll, they'll be here. No, no, no. They'll, 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 they'll. no one's causing a problem in Trump Tower for four years. <laughs> That'll be 19, great. 18000 a month for a one-bedroom. How, how much? 18000 wow. Is that how much it is? Pull it up. Let's see. Because I had I a three-bedroom there, but I got rid of it, but I got uh, half a million for it. Really? This, this I don't know if you <laughs> got a good deal on that on that apartment, Jim. <laughs> Half a no, million. Yeah, to buy one, it's probably five or six, right? Yeah. Yeah. I bet you it's going, uh, I bet you they had to lower the price because no one wants to live there. $2,900 a foot. Wow. Yeah, one so, bedroom. So what's 500 square feet? <laughs> I wonder if they have like a laundry there, like where you run into them doing your laundry, like uh, down the basement. You think Trump has to use the, the community laundry? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it might be less. Maybe it's like thirteen grand a yeah. month or something. The laundry know, room but... for the building is on the fifth floor, so you may oh. you may oh, see yeah. President like Trump <laughs> throwing a load in there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Melania just comes down and she does yeah. she does laundry on Tuesday. Yeah, so a pair of bunny <laughs> slippers. Yeah, let's keep let's keep the machines clear, okay? So he's gonna the live there on the weekends. Is that what it is? And then during the week he'll be in the White House. Well. I, Melania and the kid are still going to live there at least until the school years. Yeah. He'll be traveling so much. He'll be traveling. But still, if Melania and the kid are there, then the Secret Service stays. Like they, mm. I mean, they'll be there with both of them. Yeah, there you go. But I they heard, get Secret Service. I heard that, too, that they were, like, running out of Secret Service guys because they're, like, spread out. Right. Plus, his children have to have Secret Service, uh, Ivanka and all them. Right. And then there's, uh, you know, Hillary and her team. Like, there's, like, too many uh, too many teams out there right now. Chris Christie's like, and I get some, too. And they're like, no, no Chris. No, he doesn't get it. <laughs> no, Chris, you're out. You're done. It's over for He's you. He's done. He's a Cowboys fan. How can that be? Chris Christie? Yeah. Oh, yeah, he is. Good boy. How is that? How could you get reelected after that? Well, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, no, I don't offense, know no offense to anybody listening in Dallas. I'm just saying. Like, you know. Maybe Kanye was picking up strategies for when he runs in 2020. He said yes. he was going to run for president. Oh, is he? That's what he said. Mm. But I mean, you know, I don't know if you know this. He said a lot of crazy shit in the no, past. No, he <laughs> I hasn't. Know, I, I know. <laughs> that that rent, thirty two fifty a month, that can't be right. That has ah, to be Oh, I bet you he performs at the inauguration. Kanye, yep. yeah, that'd be the fucking best inauguration ever. I mean, but that's what—that's that, a great point. That's what he's probably trying to do. Do you have any how idea how excited I'd be if Kanye West performed? I would want to go to Washington. You if wouldn't Con lose him as a you would you wouldn't he wouldn't lose him as a fan. You, you'd be more into it. I think he was—he's the man. If he performed at the inauguration, I'd be so psyched. I wouldn't carry the way. I, I'm not a fan, so I'd be like, ugh. But what about, what about what about other Kanye fans? Who else would perform? That's a good list, though. Like, who else would Kanye, do it? Kanye, country like, singers. They're probably country singers. Yeah, Kanye's probably like, I'll do it, but nobody else can do it. Nude. I'm not Nuge sharing the Kanye. stage. <laughs> yeah, Kid Rock is selling uh, uh, pro Trump T-shirts. Oh, so maybe Kid Rock would do it. Kid Rock and Kanye. That's a West. great show. That's a great show. I saw him at Red Rock. He killed it. He Kid was Rock. Great. Yeah, that's a great show. I just don't know if the fans like the, the Kanye and Kid Rock fans. <laughs> I don't yeah. know if they might mix, mix a little bit they... better because you know Kid Rock came from kind of doing rap too, so he he wasn't. Yeah, but that now far. now <laughs> those aren't the same fans anymore. Now he sings country music and waves the stars and bars everywhere he goes. Yeah, yeah but I think Jim will back <laughs> us up. But once you're the, at that level of celebrity, everyone's everyone's a fan. It everyone's a fan. Everyone's Absolutely. Favorite, right? yeah, I'm worried the... about your hand. 
No, I do kettlebells, so uh, you know I. How'd I know... you do, how'd you how'd you hurt yourself? Well, because they're rough, Ooh. and I just I don't wear gloves, which you're supposed to wear do. gloves. I've worn gloves when I work out. Are you still working out like you do? Yes. How's that going? That's been years now. Yeah, yeah. It's an insulting question, though. Is it? When you go, are you still working do you out? It, do you think it takes the edge <laughs> off of uh, of you? Like, do you, like, are you an angry? Because I feel like I'm angrier now that I work out. No, it doesn't affect it. I just I feel better that I do it. Yeah. yeah. How long have you been working out for? Hey, you? if you don't want to get into it, that's fine. But this is radio. <laughs> I'm trying to get used to the new format here. <laughs> How long have you been working out for? Uh, like two years, something like that. I started. And doing it's been it. an angrier two years. No, I feel angrier now than when I first started. Oh, like, I see. Like I always thought, like you work out, it takes out that anger. Yeah, it doesn't. Do you have a trainer? I think I'm doing it wrong. That's what I think. It's do you have like, a trainer? Yeah, I do. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. They come to my house sometimes. I like that. In your apartment or in yeah. your gym in the apartment? Gym? No, my apartment. I would uh, never. I don't like gyms, but like sometimes you have to go to a gym. I go I to the like gym. It. I don't. I would never want anybody in my apartment. What do they have you do? Deep knee bends in the in your apartment? What do you do in your apartment? No, I have the kettlebells <laughs> in there. Oh, that'd be weird. Yeah, you don't swinging them into my own apartment. No way. No. Well, hey, I'm just saying it's. I'd rather not fight the traffic, and I don't like going to the gym. I hate it. Yeah. Do you? Uh, you don't have glass containers of collectibles everywhere, though. I like oh, gym. Has, gym. gym I like too many collectibles. But just for the locker room, wink, wink. <laughs> yeah, I figure. <laughs> are you the kind of guy who goes for the workout but hangs all day because you just can't stop talking to everybody? He's, He's so Steve funny. I do know a dude like that. Do like, you? I see him. I'll come back an hour later, and he's still primping his hair. Yeah, they I have nowhere he, else to go. Like, it's what crazy. Are you doing? And they need a sense of community. Mm -hmm. They need a place where there's people around, and you know they can have their little conversations, like mirror conversations. I'm oh, in and out today. so fast in the gym. I I, I do my hour. Sh I, I'll sometimes go in the steam room for a few minutes, shower. I don't want to talk to fucking anybody. Well, there's these people like uh, when I go to the gym, I see them. They're like in their early twenties, and they're like working out. And I'm like, okay, you know. And then they just hang out. Like I guess that's their social place. And in I'm, their twenties, you think yeah, they have like a bunch of family money or something? They just have yeah. nothing. No, going no. On? I mean, like you know, whenever it's like after work or whatever gotcha. it is but like it's weird that like they're in the, like they're not going to go out and party they're that's like their kind of night you know that's like going to hang out there and when i was you know in my 20s like that would have been like the last thing yeah. so i'm wondering if they were like in college and like that they were kind of like nerdish and they're like you know this is like the gym is a safe place you are know, they, getting, out are they getting laid though are they gay guys who are hooking up I uh, well easy. <laughs> I, I don't I don't know if they're actually hooking up, but I it's not that kind of swarmy Jimmy. This thing. took a turn. It's like every, it? it's everybody a fair question. Everybody looks like they're like a, you know like a CrossFit Muay Thai you know warrior types. So know? yes, they are. It's like a, it's, a, it's like a Game of Thrones uh, you know <laughs> extras do you just casting. Do, you just do kettlebell stuff, or do you do any of that like Muay Thai fighting? I can't do the Muay Thai. You I, I wish you I was younger. I'd like to do. What it. do you do yeah. kettlebells? You just swing them. I swing them around. Yeah, you so you said you do them. You squat. I stop. Swing. Doing, I do them once in a while. Well, what's your workout then? I have. Uh, I don't need to yell at me, Dave. I'll <laughs> no, I want to. I want to. I want to see if energy is good on the show. Let's yeah. see. I, I do. Um, you really I, are angrier. I, I do this <laughs> kettlebell swings and kettlebell squat lifts, but I don't do anything else with them. Well, what's your workout then? And well, it depends on the day. It switches up. Oh, like yesterday, I did uh, <laughs> crab push-ups and a whole bunch of other things. Crab push-ups. That's where you do a push-up and you move down and you do a push-up and you push yeah. down and come back. I like and that. I did. Uh, I did squat presses where you squat, stand, curl, press. I do those a lot. Oh, so you use free weights. That's what. Yeah, I'm I like now. free weights. If you want a do great you... kettlebell. Workout. Check out this guy, Mike Mahler. M A H L E R. Oh, he does a shop. Uh, I, I'll put my guy up against Mahler. <laughs> No, I, just, I didn't know we were gonna do. Uh, he's do you got, do burpees, Jim? He's, he's got oh, like yeah. a. Oh, he's, you do the burpees? Fifteen. He's got a, a DVD. <laughs> he's got like training DVDs for kettlebells that are really good. Oh, that's cool. And, Probably haven't done fifteen hundred um, burpees in your life. Yeah. If you try try to do this DVD, <laughs> it, you'll be just destroyed. It's but he's. I'm sure he's. Oh got wow, clips. that's pretty interesting. I'm gonna sell a workout DVD. You are. That's what I'm gonna do. Well, well my guy, Coach Fury. Is excellent. So Coach he's Fury, just, yeah, that's his name, and he's great. Oh, no wonder you're badass. Badass. Coach <laughs> Fury. I'll say it again. It's like Rex Quando. and he, and he <laughs> totally, he totally like, uh, you know, like there's all these kettlebell like, uh, uh, I guess you have to get like these uh, like evaluations and like, uh, you know, um, next level of kettlebelling. Like, you know, it's amazing. Like we're like, you can lift like a hundred pounds of kettlebell over your head, and then like. A bust of fright. That's him. Cool. Yes. Coach Fury. Cool. Yes. Don't let the glasses fool you. He's here's, an animal. Here's my only no, question. He's great. Because he also like is good at working with like people who are like in good shape and also people like me who are like basically uh, you he know quotes, some kind of like make a wish thing. He quotes <laughs> Rambo on his website. Yes. <laughs> Stand for something or Ram die for nothing. When is uh, when is uh, when is uh, Stallone going to be called into Trump's 
for the next. Uh, I, I feel like they're going to put him in charge of the army or something, right? It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I thought at least Bruce Willis would be called in because a lot of these guys supported him all the way through. Well, know? Kanye, that's a shot to people's ego if Kanye got that first nod. I wonder, uh, I wonder, uh, you know, like what other uh, rappers out there were secretly supporting Trump? I bet a lot of them. They you all love so? their money. From yeah, the, and, and and Trump's like a Trump's like Trump's like a rapper. You know what I mean? He is. Yeah, he's opulent. Yeah, he rolls hard. Yeah, he does. Mm. Jim, you said something in there um, that you're going to do a workout DVD. Yes, I am. <laughs> When did you decide that? Because I hadn't heard. I, I usually want run... to do it. I feel I'm qualified to do it. Do you wear a little we outfit? Or... I do. You do? See, I wouldn't Yellow do Yellow spandex shorts. You do? Yeah, no underpants. <laughs> <laughs> a hint of camel toe. Yeah, just a hint. <laughs> So, so that I don't like. I don't like any of that. Oh, I love it. What's the... Because usually we run business ideas past each other. Oh. So what's the... I mean, what's the premise of the workout... DVD. Just get in shape, man. I'll, I'll do a few exercises, show you how to do them. Like what? I'll put some whatever, squats, some kettlebell jazz... <laughs> And then you should then you should back it up with a book of uh, healthy choice diets sure. that you do. Is there any music playing? No, I don't want to get the rights to music. You know, what you so you just do? don't. You just skip music altogether. And I'll just kind of coach people. Well, like you how? Should... Oh. As Chip. <laughs> no, just me. I'll say like, hey, swing a little bit of the kettlebells. Here's what you do, <laughs> well, and that actually, works. This. It's actually really contagious. Yeah. Hey, how about you do this? You back it up with. Um, some of your most favorite healthy, lonely meals in hotels all over America. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They have an asparagus soup at the Radisson Inn that you might want to try. Here I am uh, watching uh, <laughs> watching some illegal porn on uh, on their system. Yeah, you can get your arm in shape for shining the flashlight on the newspaper while you're eating alone. Yeah. That'd do you uh, do you do room service when you're on the road, or you go only out? Well, both? I actually do both. See, I don't do that. I try and like get out of the hotel. I how do, do you too, How do you guys roll? Like when you're on the road, what do you guys do? Yeah, we got to get out of the hotel. Go and out. You also have that thing like at, at a show, like at a, at a concert, like they'll have that like backstage, like for the crew and everything. Like they'll have that food. Do you guys eat that food too? Or? Well, now some of these places that we've been playing that do have a nice kitchen or a restaurant attached. They're not giving you like the deals like they used to. Like, uh, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. used to be like, oh, you could, you know, play House of Blues. I mean, House of Blues still will do it, where they they have really nice catering. But we just played this place in Birmingham that had this awesome restaurant. But of course, yeah. we had to pay. What? You don't do travel they make with you the pay chef. Pay for food in no. the restaurant you're Those, working in. They some of these venues do, especially if the tickets like in in Birmingham, like we're gonna sell maybe four or five hundred tickets in a club that holds 1200 people you're not going to get oh you've been to you've been to the star dome (laughs) (laughs) that's a hard sell it sure is right it really is right oh look we came alive yeah i I played there like seven (laughs) times every time i play there it's like another rung of the uh the place is less sold so it's almost like now it's uh you know like just like a very uh intimate conversation yeah i've had um, (laughs) i I don't think of you ever having trouble selling tickets i guess sometimes in certain markets it's rough though right yeah no birmingham used to be great for me but that was like uh during the height of like I guess the insomniac thing, right? But uh, the crowds that do show are They're really great. good. Awesome. I haven't been there in years. I'd like to go back though. You we know. should uh, take a break. Oh yeah, let's take a break and Got tinkle. It. Dave is going to be doing Caroline's New Year's Eve that whole no, weekend. No, uh, the twenty eighth through the thirtieth. Oh, New Year's sorry, Eve. you're not. Yeah, not uh, not New Year's. Are Eve. you doing New Year's Eve anywhere? Or no, I'll uh, probably be. I don't know. I guess local somewhere. Maybe okay, cellar. Twenty eighth through thirtieth at Caroline's, and why do they just keep you for one more night? I, I think they have their own like thing. I wouldn't want to. I mean, like that's such a thing? crazy night, anyhow. You know, I'll be at the. Uh, well, I'm old. Well, oh, you and me both, Dave. We'll talk. <laughs> Guys who give it like old person banter. <laughs> I'm doing my workout DVD. I'd love you to be, make a guest appearance. Really? Yeah. That's so cool. It'll be, it's going to be so fucking hot. <laughs> I'll, I'll be at... Like sexy, uh, right? Yeah. I'll, I'll hand you a towel at the end. Yeah. Nice one, killer. Yeah, my forehead. It's good. I'm going to be in uh, the uh, Terrytown Music Hall New Year's Eve. Whoa. Nice 8 o'clock show. Bring in that new year early. That's great. Get exciting. home. Exciting. Get there early. They have some great homemade ice cream around, right around the block. Do they? Yeah, it's like one of those little towns. Like and I'll tell you, treat myself. You know what, Jim? There's a great vegan place. You're always looking for vegan yeah. places. There's a great vegan place right across the street from Terrytown Music Hall. Ooh, do or get tell. there a day early and go to Sleepy Hollow, huh? <laughs> where history comes alive. <laughs> <laughs> and Jamie Josta, you got your very own podcast as well. Yeah, I got a an awesome interview up now with Nick Diaz. He like rarely does full length oh, cool. podcasts. So um, check it out. It's on iTunes, SoundCloud, or sign up to gasdigitalnetwork.com. Use my code though, J-A-S-T-A. Oh, Just you point, yeah. type in Josta. There's a bunch of free songs up there under my bonus content section. And I got two gigs coming up February 17th in San Antonio at the nice. Paper Tiger and uh, February 18th in Amarillo at the Ink Life Tattoo Convention. We're just chilling today. We're just cold chilling. Oh, shut up. Wait, did he order my sneakers? Where's my credit card? They're not going to come on time. Venue, 
that place when we get near the time. Oh, did you find them? I'm looking. He's gonna try to, to go to Jamaica Avenue and just like go to the stores. And find Where's my credit card? <laughs> I have no pocket. Okay. D-Bag's gonna hold on to it for a little while. <laughs> no, I'll get back then. Oh, no, that's I, I need it. <laughs> it's it's yeah, fine. What are we on a shopping spree or something of that nature? <laughs> but they don't do overnight shipping. No, it's a third party. Yeah, it's probably in China. It must be from China because it said that the earliest that would be here was January twelfth, and that was the only option for shipping. They don't That's sell. No good. They don't sell direct from. They don't sell bootleg Yeezys direct from Amazon. So what about Jordans? Are they are, are they still like a big deal, or it's just now it's yeah? They're fucking these huge. are Air Jordans. What I'm wearing now. No, they're not. <laughs> they are so. <laughs> they're shitty Asics. No, they're not. They're, they're fucking... falling apart. Those are Air Jordans. They're different. Why don't you have Reeboks? You got the UFC hookup. Why don't they get you some nice Reeboks? Maybe they would. I, but these are Jordans. I'm wearing a pair of... Uh, these are Jeff Jordans. They're good. <laughs> <laughs> they just showed uh, Kanye coming out of Trump Tower with Trump. Yeah. And uh, he wouldn't comment on anything. The press was like, don't you have a comment to make? Don't you have a comment to make? And he was like, I'm just... I just want to take a picture. And so they all... They took a photo together, Trump and Kanye. And then... When he said goodbye, Trump gave him, like, the black guy handshake into the hug thing. Oh, no. It was great. He didn't botch it either. He, no, it, it was good. The angle, there might have been some awkwardness at the end of it. I don't but know. But the angle didn't show it. It just showed a little bit of a... It looked legit. And uh, while we're on the topic of Trump, we're getting, uh, well, the show that we did in 2008... That K Rock extravaganza. Yeah, that was when it was. That was the golden age. Oh, sure <laughs> that was. That was when it was good. Oh my God! Yeah, no cursing. That was a ball. <laughs> better that way. Oh, much better. But uh, Triple H's appearance on our show is getting uh, uh, highlighted all over the place today. Cause you remember the the, the wrestling storyline that we talked about a lot on the show about Vince McMahon blowing up in the limousine. I do. Well, Triple H, uh, <laughs> and we had forgotten. On the show, brought up Donald Trump in that context. You want to hear it? I yes. do, yeah. This okay. is from 2008. Yes. Uh. Subtle, you know? uh, Sam, you got a question for Triple H? You're always good with the question. Yeah, sure. Uh, how worried were you when you thought Vince McMahon was dead? Oh, man, I was scared to death. If, if, I, if I hadn't seen them pre tape it where he got in and out of the car, <laughs> I, 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 you know, of course, you're talking about the limo explosion. When we saw that, what we'll kills me is so many people call. I mean, the office the next day, like, people, I'm not kidding you, like, and they'd probably be mad at me for saying, like, Trump called and was like, Did something happen to Vince? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, did dude, Trump it's, not understand that that was magic, a skit? It's <laughs> the magic of television, you know what I mean? <laughs> All right, we got to get out of here. Trump. That's a good follow-up uh, on your part, Jim, clarifying right. that well, Trump not understand that. Absolutely. I wanted to get in there. I sense this video will be big someday. By the way, the headline on Deadspin right now says, uh, Donald Trump, it says, Donald Trump is unclear on whether wrestling is real. <laughs> oh, that's great. What's the headline on that haircut from 2008? Let's yeah. go back to see you. <laughs> It's a little, uh, yeah, that was a little, a little longer, a little dome shape. It's a nice little pussy willow hair. Yeah, look at that. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, looks like a tighter curl there, Sam. Mm. Well, is. I think I was uh, uh, grooming it a little bit. Yeah, I hadn't given up. Yeah, he's it's the Lawrence Hilton Jacobs. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, a little, uh, uh, it's like a serious clown. Yeah, a you know, little like bit. A clown who during the day is also a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> That's me without the paint. <laughs> yeah, that was. Uh, I think there was there was a pick involved. There were combs involved. That was actually there was some grooming there. Is that your natural hair? Uh, it is curly. Yeah. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Really? Was, there was more of it then though. That'd be great if that was. Oh a yeah. <laughs> Although I just say, because um, it was it was longer. You mean in different parts? Just everywhere. There's a lot more. Of it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Did you yeah. notice that? I would you, say you though. Moved down the Reseda <laughs> Avenue. I think so. Yeah. I think. I mean, it's so it's pretty much the same if you look, or is no, it, it looks better way. now. It looks way better now. You think so? No, <laughs> no. I think now you look like a. You know, it's just better. It yeah. really does. Now yeah. you look like Willy Wonka. Back then you look like, <laughs> <laughs> like back then you look like uh, Ark Garfunkel without Simon. <laughs> back then it was like there was too much to deal with. Now mm -hmm. it's a it's a little easier, easier. now. <laughs> yeah, it's just and do the uh, curtains match the drapes or what's going on downtown? <laughs> yeah. What's going on downtown? Jeez, damn. Yeah. I didn't know this was that <laughs> kind of show. Is that morning radio or what's going on here? Let's get back to something else. No, I think the Wu-Tang Clan said it back. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, I just love that, uh, that now all of a sudden, eight years later, Oh, sure. Donald Trump is being exposed as this guy who might not have realized that a wrestling storyline was, <laughs> was, 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 was not exactly a documentary. <laughs> Poor Donald, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, Donald was involved in the other one that everybody got all... With. Donald bought Monday Night Raw at one point on WWE TV. So you'd think he might 
realize that unless he thought he was the actual owner. Maybe he thought he was the real owner and didn't realize that it was just. Well, just he also television. had his own football league, right? For a while, wasn't Vince? His, yeah. No, um, I'm talking about Donald. I mean, like I guess bo- they both had their own yeah. football leagues. Yeah. Well, well, you got to watch that Donald's documentary on Thirty for Thirty. It looks good. It looks really good. What was Trump's? USFL. Yeah, the oh, USFL. Right. He tried to start his own. He killed uh, it. The generals. Trump killed it. Watch the documentary. Jersey General. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He killed the. He, he had beef with these dudes, the other investors, right? And he, he killed the league. When And when was they that? Had Herschel Walker. They had a bunch of good players. Sure, Herschel Walker was responsible for the Cowboy dynasty of the early 90s because they traded Herschel for all these picks and, uh, when, and got all these fucking amazing young players for him. Mm. I love that Like Vince still started his own football league. After it didn't pan out for Donald, he was like, well, it didn't work for Donald, but for yeah. me, I can make this right. happen. Oh, XFL. <laughs> XFL. I remember XFL. that. Was that Arena? No. Well, the, the, the problem was... That was, was regular the, football. The, uh, the, uh, the XFL pre-show is what killed it. <laughs> what was that? It was Opie and Anthony. <laughs> 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 they're doing... That's the, I thought that's what you were talking about with the documentary, because they're doing a 30 for 30 on the XFL next. Oh, they are? Yeah. Well, watch the one for the USFL. It was, I mean, well, I'm surprised nobody's ran with that merch. That would be cool, like, fun throwback merch. Like, for all those, I love all those teams. <laughs> I would totally get one of those, whatever the, I forget what the Jersey team was. I would buy it at a pop-up general, store for, like, the $150. General. Jersey Generals. Yeah. Oh, this is, what is this? This is it. This is the XFL. XFL they, footage. Was that Deion Sanders in it? No, they did no. not get Deion Sanders. <laughs> they had He Hate Me. That was their biggest... Their biggest player. Because they could write little nicknames on the back of their jerseys. Uh, <laughs> like the original Twitter names. And did they play like during the regular season or was it off season? Off season. Yeah, they, oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, but this is real hard hitting Smash Mouth football. Not like that oh, pussy NFL. <laughs> <laughs> so this was around today, they could get like Tebow and who could they get? Manziel. Yeah, they would. He'd be a big draw. He'd right? be the star there. Smash it, that Vince McMahon, I wonder how rich that guy is. He's worth about two million. No, no more, way. It's significantly more than. <laughs> I mean, come on, like that guy, you know. Yeah, he's worth about uh, something like a billion dollars. And Dude. Linda is in Trump's cabinet. I know. Yes. Yeah. Crazy, huh? My God. There was a lot of open seats at the XFL yeah, game. What about XFL <laughs> merch? <laughs> Pull up eBay. Can we get XFL merch? Oh, right yeah. Now? XFL merch is not <laughs> exactly <laughs> running at a premium. No? Or is, or no. Is, is that the type of stuff that then they just send to, like, some really poor country as, like, a write-off? I think they, they have give it away. boxes of it in there. Oh, yeah. He hate yes, me. He hate me. Thirty four ninety nine. That's reasonable. The Rage XFL Championship Football Jersey. Is it twelve ninety nine? That's I like not it. peanuts. Thirteen dollars. Okay. The Memphis Maniacs. Yeah. With an X though. Do you see that it's right. Maniacs with an X? That's because it's a little more Smash Mouth. This brand of football. I, I, I it's a little think. saucy. Like you don't bring your kid. No, you wouldn't want to bring your kid. No, you no, bring no, no, your no, step no. kid to this. And let me kind tell you thing. something. Wait till you see these cheerleaders we got in the XFL. Yeah. Oh, really? Va, va, oh, yeah. Hey, are the Raiders really going to Vegas? That I don't know. Wow, that's going to be really tough for uh, SF. Didn't no they way, just really? come to LA? Oakland. I heard that. No, so no the Rams went to LA. I'm oh. getting a place, and I'm going to just make it an Airbnb in Vegas because think about how many people from the other teams, like there was fans that will fly in. It's so easy that's from true. Denver, from San Diego. It's such a quick flight. Like, I think that's a good move. I mean, obviously, Oakland people will be bummed, but they're not moving. I don't you know, know why we're going to move. It's a, it's a ploy to stay in Oakland. Oh, okay. I think there was a Las Vegas XFL team. How many? Oh, yeah, there be... were the Vegas. Uh, I, I can't. You all right? I actually didn't mean to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, that was a mistake. I was just picking up my head. I didn't know there still was a drop button. <laughs> well, I told really... you it was Smash Mouth. You know these football, <laughs> even the names of the teams. You don't want to say it in front of mixed Wait, company. Wait, the Vegas? What? Well, don't um Las Vegas? I just can't remember. You don't? <laughs> you don't know the gamblers? That's not true. I, I remember there was a Vegas team, and it was some cheesy name. The mm. Vegas Degenerates. No, it was. I know what, what was it was. It? Oh, what was it? I don't remember. Uh, the, the, Las... the Blackjacks. Um, <laughs> the Croupiers. Oh. <laughs> uh, the Las Vegas. Uh, oh, the Buffets. Lose It All and Kill Yourselves. That was it. <laughs> I don't remember. It was the Las Vegas Outlaws. The Take a Knees. <laughs> <laughs> the Outlaws. Yeah, the Las Vegas Outlaws. You didn't even compliment my Las Vegas fanny pack. Oh, it's nice. I didn't notice it. I can't believe we're all not living in Las Vegas. I mean, that is the best play. Uh, I mean, as an entertainer, not, you're I close to every there. town that way. Yeah, I'm not going to draw there. there. You're not going to draw there, but if you live there, like there's a couple of comics that live there. There's great flights out of there. Yeah. Ryan Regan lives out there. You can get a flight anywhere. Anywhere, anywhere in the world. 
You know, let's say you want to do your classic uh, every year you do Hong Kong. You bang, you're there. Right. That there. is true. Vegas lot. Airport probably have never delayed, not very few delays because mm-hmm. the weather's good. Oh. Mm-hmm. You get a lot of flights out of New York though. Nah, New York is tough. Yeah, nah, but I mean, if you're, if you're, if you're <laughs> York Big Apple, is, uh, and... that's fan, that's fantasy league right there. <laughs> there's, there's no way you get three airports here if you're Big Apple. And... If you're what? <laughs> Big Apple. And... You do white planes. What's that? You do the white planes airport? Only white planes. <laughs> really? <laughs> Westchester. Wow, airport. I didn't know that you flo- that you rolled like that. No, I've never flown to white planes. The international the only, airport? No, no the only place a, you can go to Orlando. A, no, my father went to Ireland from there. I thought that that was a private jet only. No, no, no they got commercial. That's Teterboro. That's Teterboro, yeah. I thought that would be your little... Uh, no, you don't fly... I flown, no, I've flown private once How are you going to get to Tarrytown on New Year's <laughs> Eve? <then>? I'm driving. <laughs> Limousine. Whoa. I rented a limousine. You never Road did hobo tripping. Jet? Party bus. <laughs> What's that? You never did hobo jet? I, I almost said yes. I misunderstood you. No. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how much it would make me laugh if Jim just showed up to Tarrytown in a party bus by himself? That <laughs> like would be just, great. He just rode in it like it was a car. I'd love to do that. <laughs> Looking for vegan Will you be food doing the countdown? With I the, party with laughter and coffee. Will you oh. be doing the uh, the countdown for the... Uh... Sure, at 8 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> at, at, at 9.30. <laughs> Will you... Did... <laughs> Yeah. So are you going to stay over or are you going to come back to the city? Yeah, that's a good question. I'll probably come back. Yeah? yeah you can, you can hit up our place. Why don't you split the difference and just go to um, Orange County? <laughs> <laughs> How far is Terry Tab Music Hall from here? From here? 45 minutes, an hour and a half, something like that. No, it's not an hour and a half. It's like 45 minutes. Yeah. Do they do music? Yeah, no, they, yeah, it's they a don't venue. That's kind of silly if they didn't. That's a we, that's a cool theater because like you can go see Spyro Gyra or like one of those kind oh, of like seats. fusion like yeah, fusion seats. music. Okay. Yeah. Or a reading, you could see a nice reading you there. You could probably or an, an author interview. Yeah. Sydney Poitier. Um. <laughs> <laughs> you do Ridgefield? I've done the Playhouse, yeah. How is that? Um, I think it was good. I think I only did it once. Connecticut. Yeah. yeah. And who, yeah. Opened, like, do you have an opener? Like, I really don't know how you do Kelsey it. Kelsey has been working with me. Kelsey Cook, yeah. She's oh, just, cool. She did this tour with me. She's funny. Is she coming to Terrytown? I th- no. Oh. No, she, her boyfriend's in town now, so I think that they're going to stay until uh, the, the shoot's done, and then she goes back, and I'll get somebody local for Terry Town. That's good. How was Hartford? Yeah, how you was it? my neck. Hey. It was good. What was Hartford like? Oh, it was good. <laughs> oh, I did so many whalers jokes. <laughs> oh, did they go over well? Fucking went nuts. <laughs> did they? <laughs> Place went ballistic. I'll bet they did. They went crazy. I mean, really unglued. Yeah. I mean, we have a brand we of Smash Mouth comedy. <laughs> <laughs> Smash Mouth. Oh, that's what I should call the special Smash Mouth comedy. Sm- yeah, yeah. Jim's more brand. It, it's comedy, but it's spelled with an X. What is your writer like now? At, at this age, <laughs> at this point in your life, it's so boring. It's <laughs> it's a little bit of a fruit, pl- like like a, a little, little bit of fresh fruit, fruit, a little vegetables, mm-hmm. and um, raw, unsalted almonds. No, oh. some Goulden's mustard. Oh, a few oh. diet cokes and some water. Does it have to be Goulden's? No, it's preferred. You it's know, very cheap, it's very inexpensive because what happens is that money comes out of the back end and you fucking lose it. That's right. I don't need a whole lot. Maybe let's a little some, bit of beer too, but get, not for me if I have guests. But let's I, get some snacks for Terrytown. Now I wonder what Kanye his rider would be. Oh, probably God. about the same, just a little oh, Meister, a little pretzel. <laughs> he probably like some diet coke, some Activia. I, I see him like <laughs> I see him like getting off on the fact that they had to get all this stuff. Oh, like there's definitely. definitely guys like that where it's like they had to run out and try and find a dinosaur egg or some kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, champagne. Yeah, how has you know? his rider not been posted on like one of these sites? Uh, like smoking Kanye. gun or what, what is this? Well, he's showing up with Kim Kardashian, so she's already. Oh, uh, you know that's a ritzy titsy bitch. Ritzy titsy. <laughs> uh, what's her name? His her sister just uh, is divorced now. Shall Look I? at you up on the Hollywood guy. Hollywood culture, <laughs> Dave. We were actually. I'm glad because we were actually thinking we were considering of tapping you in. For maybe like a Hollywood gossip segment once. Oh a week. sure. <laughs> yeah. Let Hennessy. me get out my flip phone and see if I'm available. <laughs> Hennessy, he has Hennessy on ice. All right. Alcoholic slushy machine. Wow. Yeah, man, he likes to fucking All party. Right, that's pretty he cool. Also I don't blame him if that. you drink. Grey Goose I mean. and lemonade. That's not weird. Grey Goose and lemonade. He's hanging out with Donald Trump. He's the fucking man right now. Yeah, I mean, again, for a guy on that level, if he, he can have a pretty ridiculous rider if he wants. Yeah, yeah no, that's I heard what J Lo I... used to like white couches, like she'd do the Tonight yeah, Show. She wanted to stain them. That's just cunty. She wanted to make them brown. Yeah, Japanese leave. flag. <laughs> she had a yeah, but whenever, you, <laughs> whenever you always talk to those people about their ride, well, not that I would, but like they always go, "That's not me. That's like their manager it or something like be. that." Like you know, who knows? It's them. Because they also wants great goose slushies. That's, that's not. That's not even that crazy. A little slushy machine. Yeah, that's TV. not bad. 
But they also roll with a different crowd, if you know what I mean. Uh huh. You know I what I'm saying? I think I'm picking up what you're putting Video down. Video games. They're not going to get into the whole like, oh, look at all these herbal teas back here. You That's know, he's got to impress. <laughs> I see. <laughs> the best <laughs> writer is is GNR. They probably have the best stuff. Cause he he used to actually used to get like a baby lamb and they would like roast it on a spit. No way, a, a, a sacrifice. What do they call that? <laughs> That's yeah, a, yeah, yeah. a bacon Satanic sacrifice. sacrifice. Yeah, <laughs> a baby lamb. Why he liked lamb? Yeah, and if he and I don't think he would. I think he wouldn't go on stage until they got the lamb. Like one time he waited like three hours. What and a they, dick. They, they got the lamb and, and they roasted yeah. it. Can you eat before you go on? I can't do that. Can you do that, Jim? A little bit, yeah. No. A little, yeah. Right. Right. A little Before, mustard. Three hours prior or something. Yeah, but, uh, that's good. Make your fans wait three hours. I like so you to not eat lamb. all day and then go on. You know? Fast, fast? Yeah, like, so you want a comedy uh, fast? I, I like to do that. Yeah, I like, to, like the humor. The humors come out. Ozzy's <laughs> probably crazy. What is Ozzy's? We're out of they, time. They've, they've had fruit and vegetables back there. You know? We're out of time. However, Adrian, you can still look up. Ozzy's uh, writer, if you want. Speaking of writers, uh, Jamie Josta, you got a couple shows coming up. Yeah, February 17th, San Antonio at the Paper Tiger with OTEP, and February 18th at the Ink Life uh, Tattoo Convention in Amarillo, Texas. David Tao, what's going to be on your writer at Caroline's December 28th through the 30th? That's the question. What? Um, well, <clears throat> You know, I like to bring in candy corn, you know. <laughs> no, I, I will, uh, I'm excited for the gig. I always play there every year, so it's kind of like a, a little... Um, tradition. It's a tradition, and uh, I will, um, I'm hoping uh, the fans will show up because I'm going to bring it. How about well, that? Well, I'm I bringing think it. you're going to bring it. You guys out there, you got to <laughs> bring it to <laughs> Caroline's the 28th through the 30th to see David Tell and Jim, Terrytown Music Hall. Yeah. Um, New Year's Eve, and uh, there was something else I wanted to promote, and I yeah. can't remember quite what it was. Yeah. Real Jim Norton on Snapchat. It's Snapchat. Oh. Who's going on the podcast? UFC podcast. We had Mickey Gall yesterday, but there was technical problems. Now, Wednesday, tomorrow, we have Bob Kelly coming in. Oh, that's and great. Bob is so call. funny. He's yeah, good. Nice. He just got right, a new great. show, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if they, yeah, I don't know if they shot, they shot the pilot. I don't know if it's been picked up, but I know his pilot was shot. Excellent. And you can follow our YouTube channel. Uh, subscribe Ooh. to it. You don't oh. follow the YouTube, Dave. Everybody knows that. You subscribe to uh, it. Of course. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> oh, uh, the network? Jim and Sam show on YouTube, and we have uh, videos of a ton of stuff. And we'll have, I'm sure, video from this show up there uh, within a few days. Hey, thanks for having me in, guys. It's good to see thanks you Thanks for being here, here, Dave. That and Jamie, nice meeting you. You too. Really. Yeah, I'd love to and have you on Gas my show. Gas Digital, Jamie? Yeah, gasdigitalnetwork.com. Use the code JASTA. I have Doyle coming up, Elisa from Arch Enemy, uh, Don Jameson, Jim Florentine. I got a ton of shows coming up, so check it out.